is a regular morning for Jerry and his family. Jerry Lane, a former UN employee, is making breakfast for his wife Karen and two daughters, Rachel and Connie. Jerry sees in the news that the government is planning to put martial law in the country. After breakfast, the family drives to the city and gets stuck in a traffic jam. While waiting for the traffic to clear up, they see helicopters flying over. Jerry gets out and sees several police motorbikes passing by. He asks one of the guys standing nearby but has no clue. As he gets back to his car, he is startled by an explosion, sending debris flying. Behind them, a truck barrels toward the vehicles, ramming into everything on its way and into the policeman who is talking to Jerry. Everyone is in a state of panic and confusion. Determined to protect his family, Jerry quickly drives behind the truck as it clears the path. Seeing the chaos unfolding, Connie begins to panic and Rachel hides behind the seat. Jerry tells her to get back to her seat and put the seat belt on. Distracted, Jerry crashes into an ambulance and gets hit by another car. As they scramble out of their wrecked car, they start running amongst the crowd towards an abandoned RV. They see people running in panic and zombies attacking. Jerry vividly watches as a bitten man writhes on the pavement for 12 seconds before transforming into a zombie and starts attacking. As they get inside the RV, one of the infected tries to force its way into the RV, but Karen manages to kick him off. The city is overwhelmed by the huge amount of zombies and as the containment fails, the military has no option but to retreat. Jerry manages to get out of the city and drives toward an isolated road. But to add to the woes, Rachel suddenly has an asthma attack. Jerry pulls over to calm her while Karen frantically searches for an inhaler, only to realize it's not in the bag. Jerry then receives a call from his close friend Terry, who works for the United Nations. He asks Jerry his location and promises to send a chopper in one hour for his family, provided he works for them again. Jerry and his family armed with a shotgun from the RV, head to the nearest mall to find food and an inhaler for Rachel. Karen fills a cart with supplies while Jerry and Rachel rush to the pharmacy. They are confronted by the cashier with a gun but quickly gives them the required medicine. As they come out of the store, they find their RV stolen. Jerry calls Terry to request an urgent evacuation from an apartment building top but is informed that no helicopter will be available until the following morning. Terry promises to send the chopper to their location. Jerry moves his family to the highest apartment building in the neighborhood. On the way, Jerry shoots and kills a zombie but a horde is already behind them. Inside the building, Jerry and his family climb the stairs, blocking the door on the advancing zombies. But the zombies get inside and are behind them. With flares lighting up the dark hallway, Jerry fights them off and manages to break a lock to an apartment. But they realize Connie is not with them. She is later found at the door of an apartment asking them to let her in. A Hispanic family opens the door and gives them refuge. With the help of their son, Tomas, who speaks English, they manage to communicate. They rest and stay for the night there. As they listen to the radio, an announcement urges people to remain indoors for the next few weeks as an unidentified virus sweeps the country. At dawn, Jerry wakes up and suggests that the kind family evacuate with them. However, the family is too frightened to leave and declines the offer. Jerry ties his arms with cardboard to prevent bites and makes a makeshift spear, then prepares to make a run for the roof. They initially manage to stealthily reach the first door. After they leave, the Hispanic family secures the door but gets startled as the zombies try to force open it. As Jerry opens the door to check, a zombie suddenly attacks but he shoots and kills it. Hearing the gunshot, the horde runs toward them. Jerry kills a few and they run up the stairs but the other zombies catch up. Jerry gives his back to Karen and they reach the rooftop as he fights the zombies. He has the last zombie impaled with his knife and the zombie's blood splashes into Jerry's mouth. As he struggles to keep up with the zombie, Tommy comes and shoots it from behind. Meanwhile, Karen uses the flare to signal the chopper of their location. Jerry and Tommy reach the rooftop but he quickly steps to the edge of the roof, counting down 12 seconds to ensure he doesn't endanger his family if he turns. Thankfully, he does not. As Karen and the children climb into the helicopter, Jerry holds the door to prevent the zombies from advancing. At the right moment, Jerry runs for the chopper as one of the guys covers him. He makes it into the helicopter just in time. The helicopter transports them to a ship in the Atlantic Ocean, where many important personnel and their family are housed. As they get into their cabin, Tiri comes and tells Jerry that the president is dead and the government has collapsed. Scientists still cannot figure out what the virus is and where it comes from, and it has spread to every corner of the Earth. Their immediate action right now is to find out the source of the virus and develop a vaccine as suggested by Andrew, a virologist from Harvard. The only report they have right now is a memo sent from South Korea that mentions zombie and they believe the outbreak started there. As they lost contact with South Korea, they plan to send Andrew and Jerry with a team as he used to be one of the best during his days with the UN to investigate the source. Jerry denies, but when he faces the threat of eviction from the vessel, Jerry reluctantly agrees to assist Andrew. Karen is not happy with the news, 
but Jerry makes her understand the situation. He gives her a phone for communication and says goodbye. Jerry joins a team of military personnel and Andrew on a flight to South Korea. During the journey, Jerry gives Andrew some safety instructions, while Andrew expresses his optimism about the mission. Later, they make a safe landing at the base in South Korea. With caution, they exit the plane but are immediately attacked by zombies. Andrew, in a moment of panic, slips and accidentally shoots himself as he runs back inside the aircraft. The surviving soldiers stranded at the base come to their aid and take them to their hideout. The soldiers there tell Jerry that the zombies are attracted to noise. Then, Jerry inquires about the letter from the base that mentions zombies, and the base commander shows him a room that was scorched during an attempt to contain the first infected person. The original zombie was a military doctor who had been bitten by a patient from a nearby village. He also learns that one soldier, inexplicably, was never targeted by zombies. Additionally, he meets a former CIA operative who was caught selling arms to North Korea. This man claims that all North Korean citizens had their teeth removed to prevent zombie infection. He also mentions that Israel constructed a massive wall around Jerusalem to combat the epidemic before it fully spread. Jerry and his team decide to fly to Jerusalem to investigate further. He calls Karen to inform her but gets disconnected. They go back to the aircraft as quietly as they can so that they don't attract the zombies. But suddenly his phone rings waking the dormant zombies resulting in a lot of soldiers getting killed. Jerry and the pilot fly to Jerusalem and land safely. He encounters Jurgen, a high-ranking Mossad official, who mentions intercepted communications revealing that Indian troops are fighting zombies. Jerusalem has protected itself by constructing a massive wall and allowing refugees to seek shelter within the city. Meanwhile, the cheering of the rescued refugees creates so much noise that it attracts zombies from beyond the wall. Jerry tells Jurgen that the singing is too loud but it's too late. The zombies climb over each other and scale the wall, then leap down onto the crowd. The military struggles to contain the infected, but there are too many of them. Chaos erupts as zombies begin attacking and biting people, overwhelming the city. Jurgen orders his soldier, Segan, to escort Jerry to his plane. As they move he looks behind and notices an old man standing but not attacked by the zombies. The zombies continue their rampage and despite their efforts to find a safe route, the zombies continue to break through defenses. Jerry again notices a young boy totally ignored by the zombies. They pass right by him without attacking him. Segan and the other soldiers fight valiantly to protect Jerry but Segan gets bitten on the arm. Determined to save her, Jerry amputates her arm as she screams in pain, hoping to prevent the virus from spreading. They reach the airport only to find his plane already departed. The military guy stops a passenger plane on the runway and they get inside. The pilots are still confused about where to head but the plane takes off as the zombies are already closing in. Once the plane is airborne, Jerry cleans Segan's wound. Suddenly he has a flashback of those people not attacked by zombies. He realizes that the zombies do not attack people who are sick. He immediately calls Theory and asks him to locate the nearest medical research center. Theory speaks to the pilot to fly to Cardiff where a WHO research center is there. As they get closer to their destination, the tired passengers all take rest peacefully but a dog seems very restless and starts barking at the elevator door. The flight attendant calls the elevator and as it opens, a zombie attacks her. A sudden jolt wakes Jerry up from his nap. Curious and concerned, he cautiously approaches as the commotion seems getting louder and is horrified to see the condition of the other cabin. Jerry immediately tells everyone to stay quiet and instructs them to block the entry with their suitcases. As the passengers stack up the luggage, one bag accidentally falls alerting the zombies. The horde now advances into their cabin, spreading panic. The cabin turned into a scene of terror with screams and cries echoing everywhere. Desperate, Jerry and Segan fight off the zombies but the zombies are overtaking them. Jerry sees the grenade strapped on Segan and decides to use it as a last resort. The explosion damages the plane, causing a decompression and engine loss. With the aircraft losing altitude rapidly, Jerry and Segan manage to strap themselves and brace for impact. The aircraft crashes and splits into several pieces. Only Jerry and Segan survive the crash and they make their way to the medical research center. Meanwhile, the team on the team thinks Jerry is dead as no communication can be established with him or the plane. Due to this, Karen and the children face eviction from the ship and are transported somewhere else. Gerald wakes up and finds himself bound with two other people in the room. One of them tells him that he has been out for three days. The director of the medical center has Jerry's phone and demands to know who he is. Jerry asks him to call the number saved. When he calls, Terry answers the phone and explains that Jerry is a UN representative. When Jerry asks about Karen, Theory tells him that they have been sent to a refugee camp in Nova Scotia which upsets Jerry as he knows that the place is not safe. After a brief talk about losing his family to the zombies, the medical director asks him what he needs from them. Gerald tells him that he needs their worst disease. He wants a deadly pathogen but a potentially curable virus. 
When they tell him that a virus needs a living body to thrive and it would not work on dead bodies, Jerry tells them that the virus is for the living survivors and the zombies do not attack sick people. He says this is not a cure but to camouflage and find a way for the survivors to safely combat zombies. However, the virus pathogens are all stored in B-wing of the facility that is infested with about 80 zombies. Determined to retrieve the samples, they study the safest route. Jerry, Segan, and the medical center director gets ready by wrapping up their arms and arming themselves with some weapons. They carefully and stealthily make their way to the lab, avoiding detection by the dormant zombies. In an intense moment, they sneak past a room with zombies inside. When they reach the main B block, the director gives Jerry the direction but they see another zombie there. So, as they move back, the director's weapon bangs into one of the metal compartments. Segan shoots the zombie coming towards them attracting the others with the gunshot and the horde is behind them. Jerry attracts the zombies towards him making Segan and the director escape. He kills two zombies while the others are locked out. Segan and the director are also pursued by the zombies while making it to the door but manage to get in safely. Jerry reaches the lab where the virus pathogens are kept. He locks himself inside, gathers a box of viruses, and prepares to return to the safe area. However, a zombie appears at the lab door, blocking his only exit. Faced with this threat, Jerry decides to randomly inject himself with one of the viruses, not knowing if it will work. He watches the zombies through the glass and, after a tense wait, opens the lab door. The zombie approaches and sniffs him, but does not attack. On his way back, all the zombies ignore him and he makes it back safely. Jerry gets immunized against the virus he injected earlier and makes his way to Nova Scotia, where his family is waiting for him. Then we hear a monologue from him saying that this isn't the end, not even close. Vaccines of virus pathogens are air dropped all over the world to camouflage themselves from the zombies. Humanity has just bought some time, a chance to combat the unknown virus.